Hello, welcome to my tutorial on this camera I bought on eBay. There seem to be quite a lot of these cameras going about, different variations, but looking at the software and such like, they all appear to be set up very, very similar. Um, the camera I've got is a TomTop, whatever that is, and this is the accessories you get with it. Um, you've got the wall mount, um, you get a disc. You get a disc, um, power cable, ethernet cable, there's a wall mount bracket, you get a Wi-Fi antenna, and you get the camera. Now, it's an infrared camera, um, which is good for at night, um, up to a certain distance, because it has infrared LEDs on it, as you can see at the front there. That sees five LEDs around the side. You've got your sensor at the top, and your power LED at the bottom. Um, the power adapter comes exactly as you see in the, the picture here. Uh, you get an adapter to fit well, whatever country you're from, really. Um, that is the only thing I can fault this on. The standards that this has been made to isn't up to the same standard as the UK um, standards. Um, a wee bit of insulation tape and we're good to go. Anyway, camera was ordered on the 19th of December and it arrived today on the 29th of December. So 10 days, that's been over Christmas, which is fairly good by anybody's standard. The camera itself, uh, I'm going to do a review on it and I'm also going to do uh, some technical setup side of it as well because it took a bit of setting up, it wasn't as straightforward as the, the manual would suggest. Um, we'll get to that later. Anyway, this is the camera itself. Now, the image you're seeing on the screen is, I'm going to get to that shortly, but that's pointing out to my back garden with the door closed just now. So, and it's pitch black. So, um, first of all, I'll open the door and let you see what it looks like with, in the dark, basically. Like it adjusts. There you go. Now there is absolutely no light out there whatsoever. Uh, we'll show some of the functions as well. You can take it up, down, left, right. You can have it on scan. And you can adjust all the speeds of this. You can scan vertical and horizontal. You can flip the camera um, if you wanted to have it upside down. You can have different resolutions. If you had more than one camera, you might want to reduce the resolution to preserve bandwidth. You can change the frequency as well. Outdoor, never tried this yet, but no, no difference. Probably well in, in daylight. Um, you can reset back to defaults. Your presets is basically a, a position of the camera. Anyway, shut the door because it's cold. Um, and go to the configuration. This is a device info, fairly basic. You give it an alias, whatever you fancy. It's got an alarm, it's got DNS set up, PNP, peer to peer. Um, all of these can be set up in this. There's a security camera name there. You've got time date settings, all blah de blah. User settings, you can have several different protocols you know, visitor, operator, administrator, all different passwords. You can have several cameras as well, um, streaming on the same line. Uh, you can, this is a single camera, but if I had more cameras I could use this one, and loads of cameras I could use this one. The basic network settings, well, they're here, you need to get these right though. Um, hopefully it will find them without too much hassle, but what you can do is if you go to start, type command, CMD, sorry, and then type IP config. Now you can do this on any computer on the, the network. You will get your information here. You can see your subnet mask 255.255.255.0, which is subnet mask. Your IP address is internal IP address between the router and the camera. So in this case, 
the 192.168.165 is wrong. That should all populate on the camera. The default gateway is this one here, 192.168.1254, and it will also be the same for your DNS server because remember it's an internal address. If it was your DNS server, it would be your ISP's DNS server, which is a totally different thing altogether. Once you've got that information, you can exit it and HTTP port 80, just keep that and then submit. For some reason when you're setting up, it likes to do a, ro a lot of powered resets, which still it works, so just let it do it. You have to set it up on LAN, wired LAN, so you need to plug in your Ethernet into your router or your switch. Um, and set it up that way initially before you put it onto wireless. Wireless, all you do is press scan. It scans for open access points. Pick one, let you know the password to Your neighbours would be nice. Um, using wireless LAN, tick, leave it on that. Encryption, well, whatever encryption you have, wet, WPA, PSK, whatever you've got and put in your key. This is my key and I'll be changing it very shortly. Your EDSL settings, just leave that. Your UPnP settings, leave that. Your DNS settings. Um, this was a bit of a... put me off a wee bit actually because I received the disk, checked the disk and it says use one of these DNS setups. Now, the DNS setups you got on disk was obviously made a while back when DYNDNS was still free. These all charge now, so you don't need them. That one and these ones are some computer in some island in the Philippines or Hong Kong or something, so I would avoid them as well. The one I got it from was, if you bear with me, I will try and find it. This is a page it brings you to. It's freedns.afraid.org. Once you've registered, which is free, click on the left hand side, subdomain, click add, and it'll bring you to here. Type a subdomain, call it whatever you want. Ali, anything, call it anything. Um, and then your domain itself, you can call it anything again. Which what you want. Um, there's thousands, as long as it's public. So you can change it to public, and you've got thousands there. You've got 898 pages in them. So you could be there a while. Once you've picked that, click your destination, type in your external IP address. Now, if you don't know your external IP address, Go into Google and type, what's my IP? And that'll be the first thing that arrives on the screen. It tends to be like 87194, blah de blah de blah, um, with points in between. Just put it in there and save. Once you've set up your DNS rerouting, you will have to forward your ports. Now, this you have to do this so you can be seen in the public domain. Now, what I've done here, every router is different, so you have to look at it yourself. But if you forward the port for the camera, oh, it's timed out. If you forward the port 80 for the camera and 99 for the camera, TCP and UDP, and that will see you good. If you want to set it up for mail, which I'll show you in a second, you want to say it, select mail server, add ports 25 and 465. Don't think you need that one. Right, I'll get back to the camera. Right, this is the screen you're actually welcome with when you when you log in. Top one, ActiveX mode for Internet Explorer. 
server push mod for Firefox, Google, Chrome, etc., and snap mode motion for phones and PDA devices. This is back to the cap. Oh, picked the wrong one. This is back to the. Here we go. This is a camera. Obviously, you don't worry about the footage because it's still pointing at the back. The settings here are. Uh, there's a mail server. Right, this one takes a bit of doing. When you're setting up your email, put your sender email address in here. That's the one that you will receive it from with attached photos of the, the camera footage. Receiver 1 to 4 is a reciprocant email. SMTP server, that's it in there. The, um, the instruction disk actually says to put your email address in there, which is, which is wrong. And there's a couple of minor mistakes in the disk, obviously. Um, translation has probably been a, the biggest part of that. The SMTP port, you can Google all your information for your email account, the sender email account, obviously in Google, and put it all in there. The protocol, TLS, depending on the, the server, uh, the, the protocol server will depend on your port. So port 465 for Gmail tells you there. Gmail needs authentication, some of them don't. The SMTP user, sender email goes in here and the password goes in here. Now don't press test yet even though it says to do that because it won't work. Press submit first then test. If you get it wrong Redo it again, press submit, then test. The alarm settings. Well, if you wanted to, sorry, the FTP service settings. If you wanted to upload files to a, a server or whatever, like footage or photos, you can set that up. I've not done that. Alarm service, motion detect, or alarm input. I use the motion detect. This sensibility, as they've called it, again, a translation problem. The sensitivity, 10 is least sensitive, 1 is most sensitive. The alarm input armed and trigger level. Um, and also, this, this is again just depends on your situation. One zero linkage on the alarm is the plug on the back if you want to send it to an external sounder on activation. Send a, a mail on alarm, then what it will do is send me some footage if I take that as well. Um, I can ask for one every, I don't know, every three seconds. So it will send me an email every three seconds with some photos. I could schedule a regular um, alarm. Well, sorry, photo. So I can pick Sunday midnight, send my photo. Um, just regularly, if you're on holiday, you know, you can get some photos sent to you regularly if you're that way inclined. Um, switch this off again and good to go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope it's been informative. And if you've got any questions, I'll try and ask them as best of my ability. Enjoy.